Frogman Friday. What's up, everyone? It's that time again. Welcome to the Frogman Friday show. Presented by Transcend, the best peptide and hormone therapy. They put your health first so you can live more and worry less. Go to transcendcompany.com forward slash Birdman to begin your wellness transformation today. Today, our badass guest is Joseph Hahn, a.k.a. Joey. He served 14 years as a Navy SEAL, exiting service as a petty officer first class. He's the Director of Training and Development at GBRS Group, which was founded in 2017 and headquartered in Virginia Beach, Virginia. You can follow Joey on all social channels. To learn more about GBRS Group, go check out gbrsgroup.com. Fast note, Joey is the most decorated tank top model on the planet, which you can view on his social channels every Friday. Brother, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. appreciate it. And uh, I see you have a tank top on now. I do. I do. Just one of the new ones I'm going to have coming out. A little scuba deal, American flag. Um, I never try to skip a Friday on tank tops. So even nice. during the week, I'll throw one on just because it makes my shoulders feel nice. The breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dig in, man. I know that GBRS group is uh, blowing up, but there are probably some people who don't know. So explain to us what it is, what you guys do over there, and how can people get involved? So GBRS Group, uh, Global Battlefield Research Solutions, um, established by a couple uh, frogmen, basically focused on training initially. Uh, then COVID hit and kind of shut all the physical contact down. So they got into the gear side of the house, uh, developed the high-rise mount, which is awesome. Kind of the, the mount for professionals, guys that train or use gas masks, night vision uh, on a professional basis regularly. Uh, that high rise mount basically prevents different cheek welds, different touch points um, for different uh, you know, types of gear that you wear. Uh, at first, I was kind of skeptical too. I was like, man, that's, that's kind of tall. But, you know, you look back at all the uh, the, you know, the Somalia days in, you know, the early 90s where they had the handle. That's where they used to mount those those sites. And that was pretty much the same same height over bore. Uh, we got closer and closer, kind of getting streamlined throughout the uh, 20 years that uh, we fought in this uh, last war. and. Um, I mean, you could probably contest to it. You, you go to the range and you train and you do all this housework and you get all nice and sharp, you know, looking through your sights, but then you throw on night vision and you actually got to go to work. It's completely different holds, completely different stuff. And you're, you're shooting completely differently because now you're on lasers because there's impossible to throw that thing up in your NVG line, uh, banging on stuff and whatnot. But yeah, then they started off, like I said, wanting to do focusing on training, kind of getting gear side of house. So they got, uh, the high rise mounts, the Hydra and the Lernas, they got, the battle belts that they now do, uh, which is awesome. They got this flexible Tegris integrated into it um, for, you know, duty belts and whatnot. Uh, they just came out with the modular chest rig, which is like the most minimalist chest rig you'll ever see. Incorporates with all these awesome pouches that you may or may not have. Um, like I was using Bud's pouches that I got back in 2004 to integrate the system. But it's, it's literally, it comes with a bunch of attachments and some shoulder straps and you weave it together on, on your your heart's desire and your imagination uh, to fit whatever you need. Um, and that thing's pretty awesome. Of course, they have a bunch of apparel, you know, t-shirts, hats, um, a workout program, which is awesome. Uh, and man, they have a great message. You know, it's, it's all about inspiring, you know, just being a better person as an individual. One of the things that they uh, talk about, you know, be a pro no matter what you do um, is a good mindset in general. Like even if you are, you know, the trash man or, the janitor like if you hold yourself to a high standard of that and be professional at whatever you got going on um a it just makes you feel better about yourself you know take pride in yourself and, and people will notice that stuff people want to gravitate towards the professional side of any field that you work or train in instead of somebody that's just there or mediocre or somebody that's just funny you know mm. uh, another thing you know one percent better every day a lot of people struggle with just self-improvement in general or daily improvement uh, and so that that message kind of DJ kind of puts out 1% better every day, even if it's, hey, we'll go for a walk today. I'm not going to just sit around on the couch watching Netflix. Um, you know, COVID kind of got people kind of lazy and stuck inside. Um, and it, it, it caused a lot of depression for sure and got in people's heads. Um, so just the messaging in general uh, that, that the GBRS group puts out 
definitely helps guys, no matter if you're in the weapons and tactics world or just the fitness world or anything in general, just, Hey, if you're a stay at home mom, like doing something for yourself, whether that's going for a walk or anything, you know, getting dressed for the day, you know, doing something for yourself and make yourself feel better and improving more percent every day. is good. Uh, they do some online content through Patreon. Their Patreon page is awesome. Uh, besides some of the you know individual drills that we cover, we'll dribble, we'll cover some of the pistol rifle stuff that we do on the range. Uh, we'll have, you know, question and answer talks, you know, guys ask everything from relationship stuff that, you know, DJ's kind of gone through or anywhere else, you know, to our training pipeline through buds and whatnot. Um, to just hate professional stuff at their level, like, hey, I got this person that I work with. How do I inspire this person, or how do I do better in this circle of, of people? And there's some good questions that come through the Patreon channel. So if, if guys are interested in that, there's a couple of different tiers. There's also a free tier, so guys can just jump on and just kind of get a preview of what's going on with that. Definitely advise to check that out. It's amazing. I've watched a lot of it because you know the one thing that resonated me with right out of the gate was the 20 minute mental health walks. Right, like just. Don't be sedentary, get out, move, do something. It doesn't have to be fast. What I've learned is that my wife walks at a pace that I have never seen before. So I want to take a nice chill walk. And I'm like, is this a run? Are we starting to run? So with that, <laughs> that 20 minute walk is solid. And seeing you guys put out a bunch of knowledge transfer, it's pretty cool stuff. What I, one thing I admire about you guys is that I've seen a lot of guys get into the training space and they're usually talking, they're manipulating their weapon, they're explaining things, but they're not actually doing the drill. They're not actually firing and watching. That's the first thing that I see from you guys is that you are actually showcasing everything that you're talking about so that it, it's like, okay, this makes full sense now. And, you know, for me, I've been out of the game so long now that if I had to get in front of instruction, I'd be, I just, let's say I don't do that because it would be an embarrassment <laughs> to the community, but that's a really cool thing. And I didn't know that your workout program was interwoven. Um, all of a sudden I saw DJ, I saw DJ and buds cause we were in buds roughly around the same time. And he just blows up. Like he is huge now. And I'm like, wow, he's muscular. He's getting after it. And then I saw him doing these workouts. So I didn't know they were tied together. So you can actually go through that's part of GBRS and the workout program as well. Yeah, um, you can do it uh, individually based. We have a lot of people that aren't even interested in the weapons tactical world, um, just motivated. And the the fitness component is based a whole lot around the mobility aspect, uh, especially us or we're getting older. I, I got a lot of injuries myself. Um, it's, it's funny. I get some looks sometimes like, oh, I can't believe you're disabled. Like, yeah, I shattered both my legs uh, when I was in the Navy, broke my back. Um, like running and stuff. I can't do that for fun. Like if it's a survival necessity, I can grit and uh, it looks funny, but uh, most of my stuff is uh, I do the the program uh, and it keeps me, hey, it keeps me sane and, you know, keeps me fit. Cause one of those things, like I want to always look like a professional because uh, in my mind, I represent my community, you know, past, present and future. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is have to convince somebody uh, that I'm a professional by, you know, my words. I was like, all right, what are your actions? Like, I see that you sit around and you shove your face full of donuts all day and you can talk about how cool you are 20 years ago, but nothing, like you said, nothing prevents you from doing something, even a 20 minute walk as simple as that. Like I do a lot of biking and swimming for cardio because like it's little to no impact and it helps me stay mobile for my kids. I got, you know, three little boys that I have to keep up with. So um, besides that and the, the fitness program, like I said, based on mobility, it's modular. It's not just, Hey, you have to be as big as DJ to keep up with but it definitely helps with the strength, um, the mobility. Like I said, I keep saying mobility piece, but like mobility is very crucial. The older you get, the, the less, like you imagine in your twenties, when you used to work out and go and throw up 225, like it's going to stop. But now there's warm ups and stretches. If you don't do you blow up your shoulder or something, just, you get more brittle as you age. Um, you're not as flexible and as pliable um, as you were you know, as younger years. So having some type of, a lot of people, that's why people stop doing fitness is like, I can't do squats and deadlifts and bench press. So I, I can't work out. And I was like, man, there's so much more to that to keep you, you know, fit and healthy. And it's just good for your body and your mind. That's funny you say that because when I met my wife, she's a fitness instructor and she's, you know, 110 pounds soaking wet. And she's like, do you want to come take a bar class? Now I'm working out in the gym, I'm lifting weights and like, yeah, I want to woo her. So I go and take her class and about 10 minutes into the bar class, I'm trying to figure out my exit strategy. Like, what do I say I pulled or what do I say I, I got to get out? Cause it was so different, but 
You're right, man. And as you get older, you want performance, you want to be prolonged, you want the longevity of working out and health. And it comes back to that, it's health. So that's awesome, man. So let me ask you a question on GBRS group on the training side of the house. I see you guys do a lot of law enforcement. Is it open to everybody? Can anybody come train with you guys? Yeah. So we, we, this, the law enforcement military side, uh, it's mostly unit to unit. Like guys reach out like, Hey, we want to train our unit. Um, and we'll go out to their location. Usually uh, we just started getting a good relationship with Academy uh, down in Mulyak, which is awesome because it's a, it's a legacy thing for us. I mean, you know, the deal with, a lot of trainings happen down there, um, and a lot of people are interested in that. So we do open enrollment type stuff for for people on our Patreon deal because we build on the skills and training we do individually on the Patreon page uh, into what we call our knowledge transfer collective courses. Uh, so the KTCs open to anybody. Um, we do a background check; it must be you know twenty one, able to possess firearm in the United States, but. Now we'll go through the whole aspect of what we train. So we'll start off every day with fitness, uh, which everybody loves. Uh, and then we kind of transfer over to meals. We kind of have all the meals prepped uh, and they're actually high quality meals. It's not just, you know, hamburgers and sandwiches and, and dried omelets from the hotel room. Um, yeah, we kind of basically filter the, or create the perfect training day from fitness, dinner, you know, time on the range. Uh, and at the end of the day, we, we do, like uh, fireside chats is more like mindset discussions and, and the mental aspect of the training. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have given us really good feedback about that. And yeah, that, that basically for the civilian side of the house, but we do flat range stuff, mostly for civilians, uh, getting people a comfortable using their rifle uh, outside of a, a flat footed flat range type deal. So we'll get into a little bit of shooting and moving um, just presentation and stuff that people find real valuable for home defense stuff. And it builds confidence in how to use that thing. So a lot of people, they'll go to the range, they'll kind of take it out of the box, put it on the table, shoot a few rounds, do some paper, and, you know, they'll call it good. But there's more to that weapon system than just being able to pull the trigger, right? You get a whole lot of mind aspect behind it and you know, a little bit of physicality. Um, but some of the tactics side of the house that we uh, learned over the past 20 years uh, deployed, we focus on the military and law enforcement side of the house with those guys. Um, it's just too much knowledge not to not to transfer, you know, it's stuff that could definitely save their lives. It's, it has saved lives before we get, you know, emails and, and calls all the time. Like, man, I took your course. Um, this suspect did this and, and, you know, having that, you know, high percentage shot and having that ability to, you know, use my, my rifle and my pistol in, in a dynamic environment just definitely gave me a step above, you know, other people in the mindset two piece, right. I mean, you got to visualize what you got going on and being able to process that. Um, it's something that, as you can contest to, you know, buds, SQT and training at the teams, being able to have that processing speed and, and decide you know, what you need to do in a split second uh, is crucial in a professional manner. So guys in the military and law enforcement, we try to hone in on that and focus on that and make sure they're good to go. Amazing, man. You guys got a lot going on, but I, I mean, I haven't been through it, but it's been 12 years going on 13 years now since I've been out of the service, but even a person like me could go through your program and gain a ton because I'm completely outdated. I'm not nearly what I used to be. So, you know, if a special operator, former special operator can go through your program as a civilian or law enforcement, you should definitely take it, take these guys up on what they're doing. Um, you're incredibly dynamic. It's cool to watch your stuff. Let's jump into uh warfighter scuba real quick. Tell us about that. The warfighter scuba is a nonprofit uh, scuba and diving organization. They take purple heart wounded veterans, uh, certify them and their families, which is awesome. Uh, one of the only organizations that I know that tries to incorporate the family side uh, with uh, mental recovery, physical recovery. Um, a lot of guys have been injured overseas and in the service, you know, even like myself, like I'm, I can walk, but it's still painful to be on land. Um, just the therapy of being in the water, uh, the freedom, you know, a lot of guys that come through the program are missing limbs and whatnot, seeing them, you know, feel freedom from their, you know, wheelchair or devices or crutches, um, and that, that smile that brings to their face and it's something they share with their spouses and kids. Like we always focus on, Hey, bring your spouse, bring your kids. You guys are dive buddies now. You know, I, I talk about, you know, the stuff we learned in buds, you know, I'm that, that swim buddy, that dive buddy, how crucial that is. And, and you know, relate that to life, but it gives them something to do and bond with themselves. And they walk away with a certification, all the divers that come through our program, all the veterans and whoever they bring uh, walk away with an open water certification so they can go do stuff on their own. 
it's not just a one and done type deal. Uh, we recently had a one of our we call it alumni trip down in Rio Tan. That's where we do most of our diving in Honduras, um, and that was awesome. Seeing all those uh, guys that've been through the program once, you know, advancing their diving professional career. So getting them more stress and rescue CPR certified, and guys that want to probably look into different aspects of work in that field or even helping out the nonprofit um, is a good thing. So the, yeah, Warfighter Scuba is a great organization. Uh, Warfighterscuba.org is the website. If you want to check it out, donate. Um, like I said, all, all, all the proceeds go to the divers. Um, even the guy that runs the, the organization, he, uh, he works on the side uh, all the time. So he's an IT guy. And every, every cent that we get, we always give back to the veterans. Um, it's very little overhead for us, which is awesome. But everything goes into training the guys, certifying them. We even get them decked out in a you know, basic scuba kit when they come out with, you know, mass fins and snorkels. And uh, we're trying to work it on getting them, you know, BCD and stuff so once the, the funding kind of gets more. But now we got hundreds of, of vets that are kind of on a waiting list because we can only take so many at a time. Um, due to funding and, and the ratios, but man, it, it's such a such a great organization. Um, it's fun, and uh, yeah, we got a fundraiser coming up at the end of this month, June 29th, down in Fort Lauderdale, doing the lionfish hunt. So if you're in the area, come check us out. Um, but if not, check the website, warfighterscuba.org. Yeah, nice. Okay, sweet. We'll end on this, man. I always like to flip the script and. Uh see what you got. So I always ask every guy who comes on, tell us a, a quick story or a story about somebody that you know changed your life, somebody, a brother that you wanted to honor, somebody that people don't know about um, that should be told. Man, I got, I got tons of stories. Um, if you've listened to any, anything I've, I've talked to before, I was, I was, I grew up in foster care as a foster kid from five years old till I graduated high school. Um, joined the Navy late in life. I was 21 when 9-11 happened. So it kind of motivated me to, you know, fight for my country. Um, I guess the biggest thing that, that kind of changed my trajectory growing up, I bounced around to so many different homes, uh, no real path or focus uh, in my early teenage years, uh, was the last group of foster parents that I had, uh, Wayne and Kathy Ballou, um, out of Lomita, Texas, a little small town, Texas there. Um, yeah, I, I, Man, I was, I don't know how many homes I'd been through at that point, but I was 15 at the time, 16. It's going to my junior year in high school. The home I was at uh, really wasn't working. Um, and I was, they were about to shift me to uh, an institution, which would have ruined my college dreams and, and everything else I had going for me because I was a straight A student growing up. It was like the only um, stability that I had was school. And I enjoyed school more than anything. Like I'd rather spend all my time at school than the foster homes because everything was always different with the foster homes, but school was always consistent. Like I knew exactly I was going to get there. Uh, but no, Wayne and Kathy took me in. They told my caseworker that Daniel, because he was my baseball coach at the time, but they were also foster parents and they were looking for a way to not throw everything away that I worked so hard for. Cause like I said, I'd Working to get into Texas A&M University, I wanted to do pre-med, um, but that time in my life, I kind of just almost given up, and I was like, well, it doesn't matter anyway, it's about to be put somewhere and, and shifted again, and it doesn't matter what I do when I graduate high school, and they took me in, kind of helped me get squared away, made me feel like I was in a real family, which is weird being 16 and probably my 30th, 40th foster home at the time, um, and I still talk to them this day, like I saw them last week, they drove up from Lomita to see my kids, um, I call them mom and dad, um, but yeah, if it wasn't for them, I definitely wouldn't be where I was at today as far as the motivation piece um, and the drive and just uh, to help me refocus where I was at at that time. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter where you come from as far as your background and whatnot. Uh, they've had studies, you know, going through buds, guys like what makes the perfect team guy, pre-buds, post-buds. It's like, man, it, it's all individual based. You can't, you know, create uh, a, a team guy from nothing. Um, he's definitely, there's no formula. It is is like the human mind um, depends on how strong the person is, you know, cause you've seen, we've had guys from, you know, perfect backgrounds, rich families make it through buds. And you have guys like myself orphaned at a, you know, young age, you know, bounce around all these different foster homes and then you know, end up at the command I was at, you know, it wasn't, I mean, it could be based on resilience. It could be based on mindset. It just could be based on the atmosphere and the uh, culture at the time. But, um, 
yeah, I guess the biggest thing with that is growing in foster care and finally finding somebody at that point in time in my life is very pivotal uh, and inspired me and kind of trajectoried me to where I'm at today. Man, I appreciate you sharing that, brother. Hell yeah. That's awesome. I appreciate man. you, buddy. Yeah, man. Well, everybody, go check out gbrsgroup.com. Go sign up. You heard it here today. You can join. Uh, make sure you're 21, background check, and then go get with it, the fitness program. Um, they have a lot to offer, the knowledge transfer. And then if you want to join Joey to go get certified in scuba, warfighterscuba.org. Um, if you want to reach out to Joey, we're going to put all his socials and information for you to contact him right after this. So tune in next time. And as always, make sure to go check out transcendcompany.com forward slash Birdman. Begin your wellness transformation today. Brother, it's been awesome, man. We'll have you back on. I can't wait to see what you do when you move out to Virginia. I'm super pissed that you're moving from Texas, though. So it's uh, like some team guys are moving out. I'm like, we're getting smaller and smaller now. Now we just got all the old school farts who are like, hey, back in the day when I used to do this. And I'm like, oh. yeah, you were cool. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because we're slowly approaching that uh, that era. <laughs> I didn't really want to say it, but I'm looking in the mirror and seeing all the grays. So you're right, man. <laughs> well, Appreciate I've, you having me on, Ryan. Always a pleasure, man. We'll talk to you soon. Frogman.